Hey, ambitious dentist, welcome to Start Your Dental Practice, the show for existing and aspiring dentists to take your dental practice to the highest possible level. I'm your host, Jonathan Van Horn, CPA and ABV, founder of DentistMetrics.com. In every episode, we aim to demystify the how to start a dental practice problem by bringing on world-class dentists, influencers, and consultants in the dental industry to pick their brain about how to get past the barriers involved from going from no practice to being a practice owner to owning your own successful dental practice. Today's show features Dr. Gina Dorfman. First, here are a few things you're going to hear about. You're going to learn the most important thing to growing a successful practice second to location. You're going to learn how to hire amazing employees. Dr. Dorfman has this really unique way of finding amazing employees. And she also explains a little bit about the psychology you need to have to find and keep those people. You're going to learn the advantage to asking some weird questions in the hiring process and the single question that identifies true leaders in a group interview. You're gonna learn some of the advantages and disadvantages of being a dental practice owner. You're gonna learn a lot about teamwork today. We're gonna learn about the two types of procedures that are in every dental practice and how to perfectly automate one type. You're gonna learn about what Dr. Dorfman calls the front desk octopus, which I think everybody knows that person on the front desk that's doing a bunch of things at once. We're gonna learn about why your existing patients aren't rebooking with your practice. We're also gonna learn about why most practices miss 40% of their incoming phone calls. Believe me, that number sounds high, but I absolutely believe that's true. You're gonna learn about a simple trick that you can do to, to get some past due accounts to pay. And the most important thing you can do, especially if you're just starting out a practice from scratch, and never owned a practice before. So Dr. Dorfman was extremely generous with her time, as you're about to hear, and at the end, she reveals a free resource that she co-created with one of the titans of the dental industry. And if you listen all the way to the end, you'll get an exclusive chance to get a sneak peek at that whenever it's ready. So be sure to listen all the way through to the entire interview to get access to that. So now here's on to our interview with Dr. Regina Dorfman. Hello, ambitious dentist. Today I have with us Dr. Gina Dorfman. Dr. Dorfman is a fantastic dentist from out in California, but she's not just a dentist. She is also, uh, like we love to showcase on this show, a dental entrepreneur. She's a software entrepreneur. She is the fa- a co-founder of Yappy, a fantastic little software that helps practices be more efficient, streamline processes, which is, you know, for me being a software complete geek. That's amazing. Uh, And it's a really, really great software. Actually, you know, she was her. She was gracious enough to let me take a demo with her team to be able to look and see it. And I'll be honest with you, what it felt like to me, if you guys are out there and you're you're not sure what, you know, these little components say uh, of how it is, is that it almost looks like a little video game on your on your iPhone that you would think of like managing the managing your your practice. Uh, So it's really, really neat of how it works. And the number of efficiencies that I saw that could be added into so many practices was very, very apparent. So uh, I'm very pleased to have with us Dr. Gina Dorfman. Uh, Dr. Dorfman, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Hello, ambitious dentists. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, um, I love this podcast and I think that it's what you're doing is incredibly important because when I was starting out in practice back in 2002, there were just not a lot of opportunities um, to learn. There were, you know, we had to trust our Henry Schein or Patterson equipment guy um, as our practice advisor, a consultant, a connector, and, um, uh, you know, Dental Town was just in its infancy back in the day. And um, now with resources like this podcast that's aimed to help young dentists um, um, or, or those who are just starting a practice, I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's so important, and I commend you for. It takes a lot of time, so I I commend you for starting something like this. 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I love doing it. It's the, my fa the fa most favorite part of my day uh, is getting the emails from people that uh, that have listened and gotten something out of the podcast. So uh, I appreciate that. So, so tell us a little bit about, uh, let's go back to 2000, 2002, whenever you were getting out of dental school and starting your practice. Did you buy your practice? Did you start fresh? What did you do? I started from scratch. I graduated from USC in 2000 and um, I started to associate shit. Um, I, uh, it was always, for me, it was always my plan that I will be in my own practice. And I had a very specific image of the kind of practice that I wanted. So um, in 2002, uh, in April, we finally opened. And uh, it, was, it was just an amazing experience because somehow it was, it was very scary in the beginning, but somehow what we did worked, the practice grew. I opened. Um, what, do, what, what do you think? That, what do you think it was that made that that worked? That made that practice grow so much? It must be me. My <laughs> <laughs> obviously, <laughs> obviously, that's what they answer. Well, there were actually a couple of things that really, um, really helped. First, uh, we ended up with a great location, and you know, I cannot stress this enough. Anyone who who's starting out in practice, location, 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 uh, visible location that actually needs a dentist. Uh, don't open where you want to live. I commute 30 minutes uh, to my practice, um, and that's okay because it's a great community. It, it was a community that needed the dentist at the time, and it makes all the difference in the world. Plus, I can listen to podcasts in my, during my commute, so it's a win-win. Um, so location was definitely a great factor. Um, second thing, dental town. I have learned so much from um, from my peers, and it's Dental Town is an incredible environment because this is people openly share great ideas, and I didn't have that um, outside of Dental Town. I don't know a lot of dentists, or didn't know at the time, that were so um, willing to openly share great ideas and and pitfalls and and um, advice in a good good way and and uh and dental town was a great resource so a lot of the things that we did we did right because we had that available um and you know i um honestly i i have to tell you i have a really great team i wouldn't have been able to do anything without them they support me they um every day they accomplish incredible things and um, besides location, the second most important thing is hiring amazing people. And that's that, that's difficult, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it has to be done, and that's part of the success. Well, I, I don't want it to be the, the whole the whole thing of the podcast, but do you have any secrets to to hiring good people? Um, oh, absolutely. I um, I actually just did a, a um, another podcast with. Um, uh, Kiara Maloli on the Relentless Dentist, and mm -hmm. we talked about uh, hiring processes. Sorry to plug. <laughs> no, no, I, I love the Malolis. Yeah, I, that, that was that, those were one of the first podcasts I was actually featured in. Was uh, was uh, Dr. David's? I was uh, on there. I was on there three times, I think. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I've listened to those. So um, one of the to me one of the secrets is that I don't look for the skill. I look for the personality for attitude. And um, sometimes it's very difficult to determine what this attitude is. Um, I feel that it's important for each um, position. Um, I think that it's critical that we have um, a job description for every position and that we determine what types of um, personality traits, behavioral traits we require for each position because they may be different for your dental assistant for your insurance biller or for your, um, you know, scheduling coordinator or the director of first impressions, you know, that lady who's at the front who's greeting your patients. That Those are going to be very different behavioral traits. So we have um, specific behavioral traits that we associate with each position. And everyone on my team is aware of what we're looking for. And everyone on my team is involved in the hiring process. Love it. And there's Love a it. very specific reason for that because people help support what they create, or rather people support what they help create. So if they're involved in the hiring process, they're gonna be vested in that employee. If they're the ones making a decision, 
they're going to be vested in that new hire. They're going to want to see her succeed. If I hire someone, there's nothing stopping my team from going back to me and saying, she's slow. She does this. She has a bad attitude. She doesn't want to learn. Um, it's a completely, a team approach is a completely uh, different approach. So in my practice, hiring is a team sport. And one of the things that we do is we hold um, group interviews. And um, if you're looking for personality, behavioral traits, attitude, that kind of thing, um, they really come out, personal, personal factors really come out in a group interview because we see how uh, applicants interact with one another. We see how they work in a group. Um, and usually the setting is that, um, you know, I'm there, some of my key team members there, especially from that department. So if I'm hiring for the front office, there'll be tip members of my front office team present. And um, we'll have um, maybe six applicants in the room. We aim to invite about 10 people. And of course, some people don't show up. Um, and so that's a great time saver, by the way, because you get to see everyone in once. You get to see them in a group setting. It's more informal. And it's funny to watch them because at first when they come in, they, um, they're very tense because this is something new for them. And again, this is a great way to gauge how someone acts in a um, kind of a you know new setting or stressful sure. setting. And then when we start asking questions, we don't ask them, why did you leave your last job? Because we don't want to get personal in a group setting. But we ask them things like, what TV shows do you like to watch? What do you do in your spare time? And it's great because someone will say, well, you know what? I like to wake up early. Uh, I'm a runner um, or, you know, I, I get home to my kids and, and I help them with homework and I'm family oriented or, you know, I'm, um, I watch all of the Real Housewives and, and then you kind of know who you, <laughs> you want on your team and, and who is going to be a pass. And then one of the things that we always do is that um, at the very end, I always ask the same question. I ask, um, who else in the room would you bring with you um, if you were hired? And this is a great question because it tells you who the leaders are in the room. If mm -hmm. someone is so confident and in themselves, they're actually able to build someone else up. If they've been listening what we said about our team, if they understand our needs, if they um, been listening to other applicants and heard what they said, these are the, the leaders. These are the people that we want on our teams. So, um, so that's the process. And then at the end, when they leave, my team gets to make a decision who they want to see back for a more personal one-on-one -on -one interview. So it's, almost like, so it's like a group audition almost, like a, like a casting call. That's really like a, a lineup too. That's, that's a really, really smart way of doing it. I've never thought about doing it that way. I, um, I, I, I wish I'd been doing that all along. This is something that I started doing in the past few years and it's, it's been, it's a tremendous success for us. Makes a lot of sense. So, okay, so let's talk about, you, you started out, you, I'm sure you had the same growing pains as everybody. You probably were, you're probably like uh, most business owners, whenever they get in there for a while, they, they start realizing owning a business is, is more about managing the, the, letting the small problems get through, but making sure the big problems don't happen. And then, you know, building systems so that those little problems are, are managed in the future. So tell us a little bit about, um, you know, the, 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 what drove you to developing Yappy or, you know, getting that, that, that set up and going? Well, um, dentistry is an amazing profession. It's a great profession and I enjoy being a dentist, which, um, I don't do it full time anymore because I, I, you know, I got a lots of plates in the air, mm -hmm. but, um, one of the biggest challenges of being a dentist is that the dentist practice owner is that you're both the CEO and the CEO and the CFO and, um, and then you're the main producer for the most part. And, you know, you, you constantly have to be, multitasking between being that practice owner, making the decisions, looking at your data, um, figuring out how to direct your team to do the right thing, um, make sure that you have teamwork, and at the same time, you have to be chair side with a patient. How do you reconcile that? 
And uh, of course, one could hire um, an office manager, but for most practices, a real office manager, especially a smaller practice or a startup practice, an office manager is really not something feasible, or at least not an office manager in the sense that someone is really going to grow the business and manage the people. And man you know, most offices have someone at the front and they call this person an office manager. I'm talking more about a business development type of person. Absolutely. Amen. That, 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 that title is thrown around so often office manager. And then I get in there and we'll talk to the, talk to the owners. We'll talk about what, what this person's doing. Oh, they're doing the treatment plans. Oh, they're doing this. They're doing this. They're doing this. I'm like, so what is the team doing? Like, well, the team doesn't know how to do any of those things because the manager does all of them. Like, that's not, that's like the opposite of managing. <laughs> that's the opposite <laughs> of that word. That means that they're the staff member. Like, why, why are they not managing that process rather than, you know, uh, doing it? <laughs> so yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Exactly. And so, you know, my first thought was, you know, if I'm in the room, I'm working with a patient, I have absolutely no idea what's going on everywhere in my office. I don't know if my hygienist has a patient. I don't know when I need to be called for an exam unless the hygienist comes and kind of stands outside of the operatory and kind of tries to summon me back to the room. I don't know if my next patient is here, running behind. I don't know if my um, uh, scheduling coordinator is working on calling out patients. I have no information. I'm in the mouth, I'm working. And, and uh, later you come out of the room and a lot of times you feel like, but why, how come nobody did anything about this? We have this patient, we have this opening on a schedule, lost opportunity, we just lost a ton of money, and no one did anything about it. And a lot of times the hygienist says, well, I didn't know this was going on. And, and um, communication typically is very difficult, difficult in a dental office because the hygienist has a patient, the dentist has a patient, assistant is taking x-rays on someone, and the scheduling coordinator is in the front taking phone calls so she can't really leave. We can talk to each other about other patients or trying to pivot in the middle of the day to save an hour or to work in an emergency patient. Maybe someone walks in with a broken cusp. Wow, great opportunity, love broken cusps. But how do you work that into schedule when everyone is busy? So um, originally when I thought, oh, I wish I had this dashboard where I could really see what's going on everywhere. And essentially, um, for me, that became my, you know, like when you're driving a car, you have that dashboard and you know exactly how fast you're going, how much gas you have left. Um, you know, you are, you have your navigation system that tells you where to go. And, and that's what I wanted in my practice. And that's how we started. Very neat. So you, you had the need and you started to scratch your own itch is what it sounds like. Absolutely. So it was developed from, from an actual need of a dental practice owner that knew that I'm going to get off on a tangent again. Uh, so the, uh, that all of these practice management systems were so bad. Uh, I mean, like a lot, like I, Dentrix, EagleSoft, everything like that, all they do is develop, all they do is give you these reports that you got to look at 20,000 reports to get one piece of information out of. And then it's just data that, you know, just everybody's eyes glaze over. Uh, and it doesn't, it doesn't put any type of contextual terms or anything like that. Uh, I've, I've talked about this probably more than anything else in the, uh, in this podcast is that I just, I just, I can't believe that the practice management softwares are all so poorly done. Uh, the exception to that is, you know, there are some coming out now. Like Open Dental has made a lot of headway um, and is doing a is, is, is seems to be a, a very much better dental dentist uh, centric type uh, software. But at the same time, we still still have to have something that can like, pull all that data into some type of different context. Um, so, uh, you, I guess you're looking at that those types of things and having those types of thoughts. Probably like what. Why am I paying all this money for all this stuff that doesn't tell me anything about what's going on in the practice? Is that, is that about right? Well, digital I, dental software is is like a digital chart. It contains mm -hmm. a lot of information, a lot of data, and you know we can do billing with it and and some dental related functions. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't. You know, a great software um, is analytical. It has the ability to analyze data. It has the ability to tell you what needs to be done next. 
it, it, it has to it give you the ability to provide you with actionable content. Um, you don't need to have a human to search through the software to find out the information that you need. If you have intelligent software, it'll tell you what you need next. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, and, and you know, I think it's because it's been, you know, dental software, um, some of the big names, you know, they've been doing this for a while and they basically created the digital chart, which works great as a digital chart. What Yappy does is um, it's in a sense a companion software. We take the data that's already in the software and we create it into an actionable content. We give heads up to the offices. For example, a typical situation that can happen in any dental office. Let's say um, I have a 10 o'clock patient for a crown and um, my hygienist has a 10 o'clock profi patient. Mm -hmm. um, now, in a typical office where we don't have Yappy, what would happen is uh, my patient checks in the uh, receptionist lets the assistant know the patient is here. So the assistant takes the patient into the room, sits the patient down. Now, I'm still running behind in the room uh, with the patient before in another room. You know, maybe it took me a little longer to numb the patient. Maybe the patient was a little nervous. It happens. So then my assistant goes and stands with a sticky note outside. You need to numb the patient uh, for, the, for the crowd next door. Well, now I'm stressing out because my patient is in the chair. I have to go somewhere else. And uh, meanwhile, the hygienist is looking at her clock and, and thinking, it's 15 after and my hygiene patient is not here. So now she goes to the front and asks the receptionist, where's my patient? The receptionist goes, oh, yeah, let me call him. And so a lot of time is being wasted that way. Well, if this office had Yappy, this would be completely different. For example, patient checks in at 10 o'clock and the receptionist doesn't have to do anything else because there's an alert going to all the rooms the restorative patient is here everyone in the room knows about it anyone can take action about it the assistant grabs the patient puts her in a chair and um, sets an alert anesthesia is needed i see it my hygienist sees it now her patient is not here in fact there's an alert going out to all the rooms that says Next hygiene patient is late. Someone needs to call him. The receptionist sees it. She calls the patient. Meanwhile, the uh, uh, hygienist, who is now aware that her patient is running late uh, five minutes after the appointment time, is able to go numb my patient and then send an alert. Patient is numb. You have a few minutes before um, you need to go there, so go ahead and finish up your patient. That's teamwork. And, um, and, and the reason why it happens is because the software is aware of what's happening in the office. It's monitoring the changes. And it directs my team to going into the right places in the office and doing right things. Um, so when, when we um, set out to create a software, we, that's what we wanted. We wanted a software that is able to take the data that we have in the practice management software, take the data that we have uh, from real life movements in the office, from real time activities, um, put a clock on it, and utilize this data to run a practice more efficiently. So essentially, it's a tool that leverages technology to maximize efficiency and profitability. Yeah, and it seems like it does a really good job of that. The, the one of the the really neat things when I was doing my demo, they talked about coming in and you know having like an iPad to be able to to fill out the forms. And whenever they said it to me, I said I just kind of like had this aha moment of just that one function would probably save dental practices so much time. And that was that the way it was, it was shown to me was that the patient comes in, the patient goes up to the front, and the patient typically in a in a traditional practice. They get, what do they get? They get papers to sign. Well, they fill out those papers, right? What happens then? They complete them. They give them back to the front, the person in the front office. They put them in a pile with a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, if they're lucky, they get it in right then. They probably have, you know, five other things they're trying to do at that, that time. Uh, and 
what happens is that the information may not be complete. The information may not be accurate. The information may not get put in for a, a day. It might get lost. It could be a million things. And that front office person is saying that they don't have the ability to do it with Yappy. What I loved was the fact that the patient comes in, they get some type of digital recording thing like an iPad. They fill out the form on their iPad. They hit the complete button and bam, it's in the practice management software. There's no handing it to somebody to duplicate the exact same thing somebody just did in the practice. Exactly. So that, you know, just, just that alone, you know, saves probably like five minutes of patient. And if you've got, you know, a busy practice of say, you know, we'll say just to use, so my, my head can wrap around, we'll say 40, 40 patients a day, five minutes a, a patient, that's 200 minutes a day that's being saved. If you're running, uh, you know, uh, 500 patient or 500 minutes a day at, or I'm oh, sorry, five minutes. Every time I try and do mental math after trying only sleeping a couple hours at a night, I always get, get, get rounded up. So five <laughs> minutes a, a patient, 40 patients, 200 minutes a day, four days a week. That's, um, uh, 800 minutes a week, basically at 50 weeks. That's, that's like 40, that's like, that's a ton of minutes in a, in a year that gets saved that you're paying people to do that could have been spent on something else, like calling patients for recall or like just, just these little bitty time savers that get so, they, they're so valuable in any business that it drives me crazy whenever I see something that isn't efficient in that thing. So, I mean, I run a digital accounting firm, right? So I have to like be the model of efficiency because we try to not have any paper anywhere. The only paper that we have in our in our practice is literally the, the, the yellow legal pads that I usually take all my notes on because I take a ton of notes. So that one little piece I thought of, when that was explained to me, I was like, that alone to me seems like that would be just a huge time saver. So you, you explained really well the, all the things that it does. Um, what uh, and you know what is? Do you have like a, a any way of knowing about how much time is typically saved in a practice that that utilizes a tool like this versus doesn't or anything like that? You know, I don't have a specific time, and the reason is because the software is so flexible. The practices can um, utilize it differently and kind of fit it to their mode of operation um but they're they're you know i i'm talking to a numbers guy so i think you can <laughs> probably confirm the statement that i'm going to make next in a typical dental office after all of the fixed expenses have been paid um the every other dollar we make after that has much higher profitability right it has much higher profit margin because you know fixed expenses we pay for our rent we pay for our key team members, we paid for our telephone bill and the water bill and whatever else. And so every single procedure we add on on top of it, every little bit that we add, um, that we only pay variable um, costs on that. So um, to be um, as effective, as an efficient and profitable as possible, we have to be able to do more with the same resources. And mm -hmm. how do we do more? Well, first of all, um, to paraphrase Peter Drucker, um, it's uh, terribly inefficient to do something very efficiently that does not need to be done at all. <laughs> so anything that we can, there are two types of procedures in a dental office. There are procedures that can be automated and that a machine, a software, a computer can do in seconds for literally just a few dollars a day and it will do it more efficiently it will do it more accurately and it will do it consistently every single day those are you know data entry why do we have a um well-paid well-trained human being scanning shredding and entering data in, in a computer when a patient can very easily do it on an ipad or even at home one of the things that actually completely drives me crazy is that uh, a lot of dentists have those printable PDF forms on their website. Mm -hmm. And you think it's a great convenience to have them because, you know, patients can print them, fill them out, and bring them to their appointment. How often does that actually happen? Pretty much never. Not everyone has a printer. Not everyone is so organized that they will actually do it in advance. And then there's some people, they will do it. They will print the forms, fill them out, and forget to bring them to their new patient appointment. And I cannot just, and I cannot imagine being that patient because you're starting that appointment on a bad note. Yes, it's your fault. You're the one who forgot. But 
you're irritated. And do you really want an irritated new patient in the chair? No. So uh, by putting and and a plus is that um, we see you know team members now. If you put PDF forms on the website now, team members have the responsibility of telling um, every new patient they schedule go on our website and print out those forms. And they have so many things going on um, at the front desk. I've uh, heard a front desk being described as an octopus because you literally need eight hands to handle everything that's coming at you. Uh, so, and a new patient appointment, a lot of things goes into it. And the last thing you want to do is keep that new patient on the phone for too long and maybe miss other calls. So with Yappy, once a new patient schedules an appointment, if you get their email, they will get an email um, with a link to the new patient forms on the website. So the front office doesn't have to remember to tell them. Yappy will take care of that. They fill out forms at home and it immediately goes to Yappy. Um, the offices get it before they review it. They say post to the um, populate into the practice management software and it's there. No printing, no shredding, no data entry and no scanning. Who likes to scan? How is scanning better than filing? We said, okay, you know what? We're going paperless. No more paper charts, no more filing. We're just going to scan everything. How is that an improvement? Oh. It's not. It's just a lot of paperwork, essentially. So, um, you know, that's one of the things that we automate. Um, reminding patients of their appointments. Um, sending out um, um, uh, reminders to schedule past due appointments. Um, preparing for huddles. Um, preparing for for the day, you know, in the old days, um, in the office, they would print out routing slip. Why do you need a routing slip? Well, now that we're paperless, we need to print out this paper we call a routing slip because we don't have a chart. And then, so they would print out the routing slips in the middle of, of in the beginning of the day, or the night before for the following day. Take a yellow highlighter and then highlight all of the important pieces of information, like patient's birthday and you know, spouse is due for hygiene appointment. And, um, uh, you know, a patient has a balance that needs to be co corrected. Oh, and we need to update the email because the email address on file is wrong because when Sally was on the phone with the new patient, she misspelled the email address when she was entering that into the system. Um, all of that, that can be automated. That's just busy work. It doesn't require a human. So Yappy will automatically scan all patient files for all of the important information. Um, and it will bring it up to the screen. The patient checks in. The minute they check in, there'll be a pop-up, update email address. Patient needs medical history updated. We can do that on the iPad right there and then, and then it'll all go into the software. Uh, patient has a birthday coming up. Woo, let's sing happy birthday. And all of this is, is completely automated, and Yappy doesn't take days off. Yappy doesn't um, get sick. It does all this really well consistently every day. And it frees up your team members for important things. For example, there are human activities, relationship activities that cannot be automated. Um, this automated relationship management thing doesn't always work. We send out tons of notices to patients to schedule um, for our hygiene, for example, and they don't. Some of, well, most of them do, but some of them don't. And there are companies out there that will say, put your recall list on the autopilot. We'll just send them reminders and recall notices and they'll schedule. Never print your recall list again. And well, yeah, you never want to look at it um, if you don't want to know how many patients are actually not scheduling because there is a reason. There's something, there's some kind of a barrier that's preventing those people from coming in. Maybe they're fearful of going to the dentist, so they procrastinate. Maybe they know there is a problem and they worry it's gonna to cost too much, so they wanna put it off. Maybe the crown that was placed last time just, you know, never felt right. I, oh, you hear that from patient, patients sometimes. Why did you leave your last dentist? Oh, they put in this crown and, you know, the tooth never hurt before they touched it and now the crown is there, it just doesn't feel right. And you know what? It was just an adjustment that needed to be done. But the office never knew about it because they didn't have time to reach out. And so our second goal is once we automate everything that, that a computer can do very easily, we also want to free up people, humans, well-paid, well-trained humans that can 
take care of these things. You can reach out to patients, say, hey, um, Jonathan, um, I see, you know, you got all those notices from us and you didn't schedule. What's going on? How can I help you? And if the person is well trained, they will um, be able to kind of talk to the patient and really drag it out of them. It's not going to happen automatically. This is when the human aspect kicks in. They're going to um, figure out, well, is it a financial issue that maybe I can solve? Um, is it, you know, maybe they don't know that we have a payment plan. Maybe they don't know that it's going to cost more if they put it off. Maybe we can say, you know what, why don't we do this? Just come in, we'll do a com complimentary exam, we'll just see what's going on there with your tooth, and we'll tell you how much it's going to cost. And, you know, if you can't do it, you can't do it, but at least let us take a look at it. It might be not as bad as you think. Um, or, you know, or maybe, hey, you know, doctor wants to know if, if the crown doesn't feel right. You know, I'm going to let Dr. Dorfman know, and she's going to be very concerned and she's going to want to see you, so why don't I get you in? Let's take a look. This is the human aspect that, unfortunately, many practices don't have time for. In a typical dental office, you see it's a, you know, it's a, every single day, it's a race to finish the day. People are coming in, patients are checking out, treatment plans need to be presented, the phones are ringing. Um, I don't know if you've uh, interviewed Chris Phelps of um, yeah, yeah, Culture I, I and Power yet. That's another great software, by the way. But um, I think that if you you know talk to him, he'll tell you that about forty percent of new patient phone calls in the practice in an average practice are being missed. That's a crazy number. And of course, part of it is poor phone coverage, but the other part of it is we're too busy at the front. And if you ask a doctor, well, why don't you? Call out, uh, call uh, to you know schedule your past due patients that haven't responded to automation. And I say, well, we don't have time to do that. Okay, so why don't you call on your past due accounts? You know that once an account becomes ninety days past due, our chances of collecting it goes down to what twenty percent? Yeah, if that. If that exactly. So, yeah, that's yeah. another thing that in regards to the calling the patients. It's also it amazing to me how many people, people they'll call one time, they act all one and done, like, well, they didn't answer, so I guess we're not calling them back because we don't have, we get we have time allotted for one phone call for recalls to remind them. That's all we have. Uh, and and uh, it's all, a lot of people are like, hey, have you ever tried calling, you know, maybe three or four times to see if they're going to be available? And they're like, well, we don't, we, you know, then because, you know, how many people, you know, there's a lot of people that get missed phone calls and they, they don't have time to call them back or they, it, it, you slipped your mind. So, yeah. Oh, I, absolutely. It happens all the time. You know, I could be um, in the shower and thinking, oh, I need to call my kid's pediatrician to schedule their appointment. Um, I'm going to do it when I get to the office. And then I get to the office, I get busy, so I forget. And the next time I'm thinking about it is when I'm in the shower two weeks later, I'm like, oh, I forgot to call the kid's pediatrician. That's what happens with our patients. And actually, the best time to reach out to those patients is once we send our automated reminders um, to schedule an appointment, whether it's a text or email or a postcard, um, and if they still haven't responded, this is the best time to call them, like two, three days later for text or email, or if you send a postcard, maybe like a week later, follow up on that. Um, the reason is because that automated message puts you into their heads. It, it gets them thinking, oh yeah, I gotta call the dentist and schedule the kids for their, for their recall exams, um, or the, they'll say cleanings, um, and, but they forget, and then now you're calling, and they're actually happy to hear from you. They're actually, they're going, oh yeah, thank you, Greg, I'm so glad you called, I've been meaning to call you. This is what happens, we see it happen all the time. And one of the things that I want, I wanted to make sure that we have in Yappy is not just the automated reminders from phone calls, but we've actually designed an interface that organizes those phone calls and lets us track, okay, they, they got the postcard, they got this email, they got the text message, they're not responding, I'm gonna call them right now. And, and so whoever in the office is in charge of um, the hygiene schedule will be consistently using this system to bring the patients back. And this is where the automation means a human. This is where the, the, the cooperation of the two is the best possible system. Humans leverage technology 
to be more efficient and profitable. Absolutely. So I want to be respectful of your time. Uh, and so, but uh, so I like to ask all of practicing dentists this question uh, to come on. If you were going to be starting a new practice today, like a new startup practice, can you give some of the people out there that may be thinking that or even, you know, buying a practice? What, what are some of the some of like your number one? What would be your number one tip for somebody to to be aware of as they're going into this to, to practice ownership? Uh, one, the most important tip. Um, well, I already mentioned location. I mean, I can't mm -hmm. stress that enough. You have to go to an area that needs a dentist. You have to do your research. Um, you have to have a visible location. I believe the visible location is critical. Um, marketing is important when done right, but it can also get really expensive if no one can find you. <laughs> And actually, one of the my second practice, we were uh, we are right next to an ATM. To to a little, it's a little community bank. We're right next to an ATM, and what we do is when we have good weather, which you know in California, so pretty much every day we're open. Um, we put a little table outside, and on that table we have some giveaways, some pens, brush packets. Um, sometimes in the hot day, we put water out there and uh, business cards and pens are the best thing to put right next to an ATM because just about every other person who uses the ATM walks to our table, gets a pen, and then, um, uh, you know, obviously they start noticing all the other stuff and then they keep the pen with our name on it. And so that gives us great exposure. And I think that um, there are other creative ways to uh, generate exposure, but I think that if you're opening a brand new practice, um, it's critical that you create those ways to to ex expose yourself to the public. Essentially, <laughs> no, we all love exposing ourselves, right? <laughs> Be careful with what you. <laughs> it's um, a podcast. It's okay. There's no FCC regulations that cover this. I don't. Think. Well, maybe they do. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I should check in on that someday. Huh? <laughs> uh, so you know, and of course. Um, be sure to get a lot of information and um, surround yourself with people who are successful. I've always maintained that you know if you you can you can very easily get stuck in this doom and gloom mode and you know uh, economy is bad and DSOs are taking over the world and the HMOs are doing and in reality there, there there's a dentist right across the street from you who's doing extremely well in the same economy. So create your own economy. Hang out with positive people who are very successful, um, and perhaps the um, the third thing that I would advise is pay close attention to your numbers. Numbers don't lie. Numbers can point to a problem. Um, and one of the things we do with Yap is we have a quick KPI. Now, quick KPI is not supposed to replace your numbers. Quick KPI is supposed to give you a daily snapshot of where you are in your day. And it's a great little tool to have in the huddle because um, you know my um, uh, team leader will come in with her iPad in the huddle, we'll talk about the day, we'll go over the virtual huddle report, which gives us a lot of, you know, here's an opportunity to do this, or here's a potential patient who may not come in today. Uh, but then she'll also say what our numbers are. I'm a strong believer in sharing our numbers with the team and saying, hey, you know what? We have an hour opening with Dr. Dorfman and we have one hour in hygiene because unfortunately we had a last minute change in the schedule. And, um, you know, we need uh, $2,000 today to make our goal. And this, and, you know, and, and, um, and then you can quickly look at all the numbers and, and see what you have scheduled and, and so forth. And, uh, and that's just, a great way to get the entire team on board and saying, okay, let's meet our goal. Let's all have a great day. Um, and of course, there are practice metrics that you have to be measuring every day to know which area of your practice needs improvement. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So uh, there, to, to, to kick us off, and, and if anyone wants more information on the app, what's the best way for them to be able to get that information? Uh, we're happy to do complimentary demos for anyone who's interested. Um, they can go on our website, yappycentral.com, and they can request a free demo. Um, I am also on Dental Town um, every day, 
this is my hometown. So, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm happy when dentists reach out to me uh, on Dental Town. Feel free to send me a private message, um, or you can uh, reach out to me at my email at drgina at yappycentral.com. Fantastic. Well, uh, you, we were talking beforehand, and you'd said that you and another uh, heavy hitter in the industry, Sandy Pardue, have recently created a uh, an ebook that you're going to be able to, to to exclusively let us get some people onto the waiting list for that book. It's coming out in the next few few days or something like that. Is, is that accurate? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, absolutely. Well, first of all, um, Sandy Perdue is a is an absolute rock star in dentistry. Uh, we I mentioned well trained team several times during our conversation today. And um, if you want to train your team to be great at scheduling, great at bringing patients back to the office, great listeners. Uh, if you need to install systems in the practice, Sandy Perdue is an absolute. Um, guru and and um, a team training queen. So um, I highly recommend anyone who is looking for improvement in their practices uh, to uh, give Sandy a call. And one of the things that her and I have done, she was very generous um, and helped us create a science of appointment control ebook, uh, which is just about wrapped up. And um, I would love for your audience to be the first one to take the sneak peek at this and be able to download this ebook off your website. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so they'll be, able, be able, they'll be able to, they'll be able to download it from the website. They'll be able to send us a text to see it, to, to tell us they want it. Uh, and so that, that book is going to, it's going to talk to us about what, what, uh, the science, what is the science of the best practices for appointment confirmations, best practices for scheduling patients so that they actually keep their appointments. And um, essentially, it's going to give you a few tips on how to utilize technology and human touch to prevent as many broken appointments as possible. Such a big deal in dental practices and such a piece that's missed so much in so many places. So we, that's going to be a very valuable resource to people. So Dr. Dorfman, thank you so much again for giving us your time. We went about 10 minutes over, so I apologize for that. But I hope that everyone out there, uh, if, if you have enjoyed this, please reach out to Dr. Dorfman and say thank you for coming on. And uh, we, we really enjoyed the interview and I, I hope that you have a great day. Thank you. It was fantastic. It was fun to be here. Bye, everyone. So a special thanks to Dr. Dorfman for sticking around today and really delivering the kind of value that we look for in our interviewees on Start Your Dental Practice. So if this episode resonated with you for your practice, then get the free resource that Dr. Dorfman mentioned called Best Practices for Appointment Confirmations, Scheduling for Patients So They Actually Keep Their Appointments, co-created by Sandy Pardue, one of the titans of the dental industry, one of the most well-respected consultants on Dental Town and that I know. And she's going to be making that exclusively available for listeners of Start Your Dental Practice. So in it, you're going to find the best practices for appointment confirmations, how to schedule patients to practically guarantee they don't bail on their appointments, and tips on how to utilize technology and the human touch to prevent as many missed appointments as possible. So to get that bonus, simply text PRACTICE to 33444. Again, that's practice to 33444 or visit startyourdentalpractice.com slash bonus if you're outside of the U.S. So that's it for today's episode, but that doesn't mean that the learning and implementation have to stop there. I've created a free report called the 15 numbers that will make or break your dental practice. This report has been downloaded over a thousand times by dental professionals. So if you want your free copy of this report that's going to outline what the most important numbers are in any dental practice, and it also includes how to look at your numbers, how to set goals, has a whole slew of really important information that is the culmination of all of my experience as a dental, dental CPA, then just go to startyourdentalpractice.com slash free gift. That is startyourdentalpractice.com slash free gift. And so that's it for today, Ambitious Dentist. Again, I'm Jonathan Van Horn, CPA and ABV. I'll see you next week with another world-class practice owner or consultant 
that will help you start your very own dental practice. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the Start Your Dental Practice community. If you enjoyed today's episode, please do me a favor and go to startyourdentalpractice.com slash iTunes to leave your honest feedback and review on iTunes. It's going to help me create a better experience, a better show, a better podcast for you, the ambitious dentist. Your feedback really does help, regardless if you like the show today or not. If you didn't like the show, let me know because it's going to help me create a better show and podcast for you. Lastly, if you know of anybody that would benefit from today's episode and today's content, today's guest, please feel free to share with them on social media or through email.